Hello everyone, I hope you're having a nice day. Today I'll be continuing my series of Greek philosophy and we are going to talk about Pythagoras. You may recognize him from your maths textbook but he goes far beyond simply numbers. Or does he? We're going to find that up. Just stay hooked. So before we start, turn on the captions if you have trouble following along. Also, we need to realize that Pythagoras is a proto-idealist. What that means is that his metaphysics or his conception of what the ultimate substance in the universe is is an idea instead of a material, contrary to the belief of materialists. But this is still a rudimentary form of it because we are going to see a development in idealistic thought as we move forward. Secondly, he was born in Samos, somewhere between 580 or 570 BC, and then he moved to Crotona or Croton, which is in Italy. He called himself a philosopher, becoming the first person to do so, and some even argue that he invented the term philosophy. But that's arguable just like a lot of things about him. I say this because we have no text available to us by him. He may have never written anything. All the writings we have about him are either that of rivals or followers who worshipped him as a demigod or something. He is subjected to hagiography. I hope I pronounced that right. Which means that hyperbole is the favourite figure of speech used by people who have written about him. Not only that, all the accounts written about him have some sort of discrepancy. To make matters worse, Plato has used him just as a mouth for his own ideas, much like he used Socrates, and Aristotle just considered him to be a smart mathematician and not a thinker as such. It gets tricky when the first teacher does not acknowledge you. This bad boy right here is Pythagoras, and it has been stated that he may have been a student of Anaximander, which you may recall from our Ionix video. His famous Pythagorean theorem has been worked upon by the likes of Thales before him, so that's just another connection to Ionia. He advocated three types of men, lovers of wisdom, lovers of honor, and lovers of gain. That sounds like a tripartite division of society, so again, much like that of Plato. He also had a theory of rebirth which he called transmigration theory, and it is said to have played a major role in Plato's world of souls which we will talk about when we discuss Plato. Now, we notice that Pythagoras believed that earth was living and hence it breathed air, which emanated from this boundless matter present outside of it. This may be a reference to Anaximander and Anaximenes, our two friends from Ionia. Pythagoras and his followers were heavily influenced by medicine and music, probably because of the role numbers play in both of those fields. You'll understand in a second. Pythagoras may have created the numerical ratios that exist between two music scales. On top of that, he explained how the role of a physician was to keep the body balanced between two extremes, such as between hot and cold. We will see this again when we talk about Heraclitus later on. Pythagoras had the idea that everything had numbers involved in it. The world's most essential entity was numbers. It was impossible to conceive a world without numbers. I tried refuting this while I was in class and I failed miserably. Remember, abstract qualities such as liberty and freedom also have numbers and measurements attached in the form of degrees, as in what degree of freedom does India have? Pythagoras created an entire society in Crotona, which was called the Pythagorean Society. The Pythagorean school had a very strict moral code. They were against the idea of suicide because man was the property of God and hence it was wrong to harm him. He was obsessed in finding out the relation between things and maybe that's how he arrived at the idea that the thing which binds everything together, which was measurement, was the thing everything came out of initially. Everything and everyone came from numbers. As absurd as that may sound, that seemed pretty rational to the followers of Pythagoras who are known to treat his word as if he was God himself. He travelled the world a lot, wherein some sources claim that he went to Egypt as well as India too in search of mystic enlightenment. That explains his fascination with the Orphics who were mystics themselves. Now, this is just a list of 10 pairs which comprise the world as per Pythagoreans. I'm not gonna read it out so you can pause the video to read them if you want to. Moving on, I want to play a little game. Try thinking of a world without numbers and if you happen to come up with it, drop it down in the comment section below. We can have a discussion about it. Thank you everyone for joining me. This is Mohammed Abdullah Sarkar from Aligarh Muslim University. I'd like to thank Dr. Zaid Ahmed Siddiqui for teaching me everything I just explained to you. And if you like this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you want to find out more about academic ideas under 10 minutes. Take care.